Today, I'm going to be building an analog beam robot from scratch. What is a beam robot, you ask? Well, I have a whole video on them right here. But a quick recap. Beam Robotics was a field of robotics pioneered guy, by a guy named Mark Tilden in the 80s and 90s. He was a physicist working in Los Alamos laboratories, as well as a questionable hat enthusiast. Well, there are no strict definitions of what makes a beam robot a beam robot. There are several key features that most of them share. Instead of microcontrollers, beam robots use a series of interconnected electronic neurons. These neurons are usually made from a voltage sensitive trigger, such as the input of a logic gate, um, coupled with a capacitor and a resistor. And depending on how you arrange these and connect them together, you can get some incredibly complex behavior for how simple the individual components are. Some other features a lot of beam robots had or they were often solar powered or they would gather energy from their environment. Um, and they're often built out of old tech waste, such as VCRs, DVD players. One of the most famous examples was made from the shell of a Sony Walkman. Beam robots had a lot of interest in the beginning, both from the academic and also the general public. However, interest started to tail off in the early 2000s as cheap microcontrollers became readily available and computing power was just not a problem anymore. So why build a beam robot today? Is not the joy of creation enough of a justification for the act of it? Well, I think the beam ethos still holds a lot of valuable insights even today. The simple mechanics first approach to a lot of problems and the basic electric systems still hold valuable lessons in our modern robotics world. But really, the most important reason I'm building one is because it's fun, and I want to. Now, this video will be the first in a series where I go over designing and building this robot from the ground up, from no existing plants. So the idea is that I'm gonna go over the design and construction of the mechanical and electrical side of this robot, and we can build on some concepts. Hopefully I can get some ideas from you guys as well. Some of the comments I've had on the beam related videos are great and there's people with a lot more insight than I have actually. So let me know what you want to see or if I'm doing something wrong as we go through this and let's get started. So what type of robot am I going to build? Well I've always had a thing for those little four-legged walkers that were really kind of the, the center point of a lot of beam projects. And it was actually the first video on this channel I built one of those. And it was a great little robot, but it had some pretty big downsides. On this next build, I'd like to go back and address some of those downsides, both in the electrical and mechanical sides. And hopefully we can design a way more capable, way more interesting robot with a lot more complex behaviors. So let's move over to the table here and we'll have a look at my old robot and what I want to improve on it. Now this is a two motor walker, so it has one motor mounted here and one here at a 45 degree angle. Now this does work, it walks, um, but there's a couple kind of big issues with this design. So the first is, let's look at how it walks. So it runs this front motor up to a certain point, and then after a small delay, it runs the back motor this direction, which pushes it onto that foot. And that's how it takes a step. So front motor, rear motor, step. Front motor, rear motor, step. Front motor, rear motor, step. One of the big problems with this is that each of our legs can only move in a single plane. So this can only move around the axis of that motor. So these are always gonna be kind of in one plane. It can't actually move forward or back of that. This works pretty well for a single gate but it's got a couple of problems. One, our front legs are wasting a lot of time lifting up before they can take a step. So the higher it can lift, the longer step it can do, but also the more unstable that is gonna be, which is problematic. Ideally, we want something that could lift up a little bit and then move the whole leg forward. And the way that we can accomplish that is by adding a third motor to this. We'll add another motor attached to the shaft of this one at 90 degrees. So not only will it be able to lift those front legs up, it'll also be able to move them forward at the same time. 
That has the benefit of allowing us to have a bigger control over what the robot is doing, the robot's gait, but also it allows a lot more flexibility with where we can put this foot. Instead of only anywhere in these lines, it can be put basically anywhere within a big circle. So we can control how our robot moves a lot better. This should also open up some pretty exciting opportunities for control of the direction of a robot. We can have it turn, which is not something that I ever really implemented with this robot here. Here are all the parts of my robot laid out, or at least the mechanical parts. We'll get to the electrical parts in the next video. So let's go over a little bit uh, what's going on here and how I built each of these parts. So this is the main body, which is made from a small piece of uh, C-channel aluminium, which I simply cut and drilled. Aluminium is great for this as it's very light, easy to work with. Um, you can cut those with standard tools. It doesn't really require very much, very much skill. This was all done with just a hacksaw and a drill press. There was no real other tools here and some files. I've decided to go with these N20 gear motors. These are super small, have full metal gear trains. They have a couple little downsides, but overall they're great little motors. So we've got three of these. These are little 90 degree ones, which will keep the footprint of my robot a little bit smaller, allowing you to tuck everything in line. So I drilled out some mounting points for these and we'll start putting this together. So first, We'll mount our one straight N20 onto this mounting bracket here. The tiny little screws here are really hard to find actually. I don't know why, but if you find some, buy a bunch or buy a bunch and send me some. And then this part will be mounted onto our mainframe. So I simply drilled and tapped this aluminum piece. And then this is mounted on by some little M3 screws through the top. And you can see that's how our mid motor, our waste motor will mount. Now you can see this is the front motor and I've soldered on this mounting bracket. A couple of reasons I did that. I didn't have a very good way of attaching or making this 90 degree part here. So I found soldering onto these. These are, are actually really easy to solder through. I think they're brass or brass coated. So you can very easily, it takes solder really easily. And you can see how I built that here. Now this works pretty well, although it does stick it a little bit far. Um, and I also really like to make my design serviceable. However, these gear motors or the gear boxes rarely fail. The motors are what I've actually had fail before. So I'm not overly worried about this, but I would have preferred a system that I could unbolt this. Now this will slot on here. And that's the front section. So this will mount the legs here, and then this will drive the lifting aspect of the robot. And then this here will drive the stepping aspect. This gives me a little bit of room up top here or here for some sensors as well, which I plan on adding in the future. Now, one reason I really like to do these solder joints here like this, or use solder as an actual construction technique is that is Partly what got me interested in beam robots back in the day. I remember looking at them and thinking how crazy it looked that these were just soldered together. I don't know, like it was a bunch of brass and copper and metal just all built into these crazy shapes and forms that were able to like walk around like bugs. I thought it was super cool and I like to kind of keep a little bit of that in my designs. Now the last motor is this, this rear one here, which is just mounted through a couple holes through the top. These tiny little screws are super easy to strip out, so you gotta be really careful. And that's the body, almost complete. 
but we need some legs. So the way I built these legs are I took a couple header blocks or uh, terminal blocks and soldered together some of the parts here. So this gives me a, a way to attach the legs to the motor shaft, but also replace them if I need to. Um, so if I have a weird leg shape that I don't like or the robot gets damaged in a way, I can actually just swap these out, which is really nice. So we've got these 2.5 mil brass rods that are gonna be our robot's legs. This is probably overkill, but hey, my old robot was kind of bouncy. So a little bit heavier leg will be good. Like that. And then these will just slip onto the motor shaft like that. And then we can tighten them down. And there we've got a bug with some very straight legs. Let's, let's deal with that next. So leg design is its own thing and it's a little bit complicated, but there's a couple kind of rules of thumb to follow. So if you find the center of gravity in your robot, which is about here for mine, let's mark that with a pen. Now, now let's go over how we bend these legs. So you can do it just so it looks cool. That's perfectly fine to be honest, go ahead. But if you want it to work, you want to pick your center of gravity and then draw 90 degree lines coming out of that. So one line here, 45 degrees from the center line of the robot and another one 90 degrees to that. You kind of imagine if I put it on here, we can imagine this line here and this line here. So you want to draw that line and you want your robot's feet to hit that line roughly the same distance from the center of mass of the robot, robot each. So if this one hits here, I don't know, let's say 10 centimeters away, 20 centimeters, whatever, then the other one on this side should do about the same. So I've marked out a couple points uh, where I'm gonna bend these legs. So a couple things to note with the legs, it actually doesn't matter what happens in the leg, where it hits the ground is important for the most part. But there are some little things that will affect how your robot walks. So the first one, if you ended up with a really crazy long spirally leg, well, that's gonna be more flexible and you're gonna to have to deal with the bouncing action your robot has, uh, which you wouldn't have otherwise if you had a shorter, straighter leg. The other thing is how the robot gets onto and over top obstacles is gonna be affected by the leg shape a little bit. So if you have a leg that's kind of sloped backwards, like coming in from this, kind of an angle of attack, if you will, That'll mean it can step up onto things easier than if you had just a leg poking forward. So let's get bending. This is pretty crude, but it should give us some sort of approximation. So now that we have a robot that looks like a robot, the next step is to add all of the brains and electronics for this. This is gonna be a pretty big project, so that'll be for the next video. Thanks a lot for joining me. If you have any other ideas or comments, questions, whatever about beam robots, drop it in the comments. I love reading the comments about this stuff, and if you've got any good insights, I really hope to be able to use it in this project in a future video. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.